Greetings everybody, this is Time Rider. Welcome to the second in what we hope is a long line of cooperative restorations. You may recall last month, Nick and I at Matchbox Restoration did wreckers. Well, for this month, the field has grown a little bit and we're going to be doing construction vehicles. We have Hodges Hot Wheels and Diecast doing the number 26A ERF cement mixer. We have Matchbox Garage doing the M10 Dinkum Dumper. We've got Matchbox Restoration doing the 58B Drote Excavator, and if I pronounce that wrong, I'm sure everybody will correct me. Uh, I'm doing a 43B Avling Barford Shovel, and Nick's Toy Garage is going to be doing the 48C Dodge Dump Truck. And last but not least is Tony's Diecast Resto, a newcomer, and he says he's going to be doing the 26B Ford Thames compressor truck. So let me get on with what I need to do and I'll include links to these other channels in my description. Please take a minute to uh, visit and watch their videos and if you like what you see be sure to subscribe and share. Eveling Barford was a large engineering company known for making road rollers, motor graders, front loaders, site dumpers, dump trucks, articulated dump trucks and it was located in England. It was an internationally known company. And they were founded in February of 1934 and went defunct in 1988. Now, Lesney put out the 43B in 1962 and it remained in production until 1968. The most common version is the one you see here with a yellow shovel and a red driver and base. And actually, the driver and base kind of have to be the same color because they're attached. But anyway, what you're looking for as far as rare is uh, yellow bodywork red driver and base and also a red shovel or there's also one with a yellow body driver and shovel so i've got the common one and that's fine let's get around to making it into something new the toy appeared to be held together with one post and one tab so i drilled out the post and took the toy apart only to find that it wouldn't come apart and then it dawned on me, uh, duh, the pin that holds the shovel on is also holding the model together. So first I tried using my grinding tip on my rotary tool and removed the burr like I would on a tire, but I was really afraid that I was going to scratch up the casting. So uh, I decided to try a different approach and what I did was just flatten off the head of that pin. And then I uh, put it in the vise and changed the bit on my rotary tool and ground a little concave surface on the top of the pin. And used a drill to drill a lot of it away. Again, I don't want to hit the casting with the drill bit. So once I got down to a certain point, I took my little grinder ball and cleaned up the last little bit of that pin head. There you go. Now it's in pieces. And I can get that 
the chassis out. I decided to sleeve the wheel or the axles and so I just cut them right down the middle. And then uh, it was time for some citra stripper and I just dropped all the pieces in, let them sit. So after about 30 minutes, it was time to clean the paint. And it all came off, the yellow came off really well. Uh, the red maybe not so good. Prepping the casting is so important and as always I start with a wire brush. And the red paint that didn't come off came off very easily once it was dry and I took a brush to it. It's amazing that the head was still on the little guy. That's usually what breaks off. And last but not least, we get to the main part of the tractor body. Most of the paint was gone, so I'm just kind of cleaning it up here. Getting the last little bits of paint out of the crevices that remain. And then you may remember or not, but I didn't ever uh, prepare the post at all. So in order to ensure uh, a clean assembly, I'm going to grind the burr off using my rotating or rotary tool. And with my 1 16th inch Milwaukee drill bit, no, I didn't get any money from Milwaukee, but I just love the bits. They're titanium hardened bits, so they work really well. I've never broken one. A drop of oil always makes that tap go a bit easier. And then once I've tapped it to the depth I'm comfortable with, we're going to throw a button screw in there. I was fortunate in that my bucket removed very nicely and by putting a toothpick through it, it was able to hold it really still so I could paint it from all sides. I know Nick over at Matchbox Restorations had some challenges with his bucket, which I'm sure you'll see in his video, uh, in that he, I don't think he could get it off as easily as I did. I'm using Tamiya white primer here because I'm going to be painting this yellow and I want the yellow to be very bright. Uh, painting this is a lot like painting a dump truck. It's worse, in fact, in some ways, uh, because there's so many different angles that you have to get at uh, inside the bucket, inside the arms. I wound up doing the little man uh, who still had his head, which is very unusual. And uh, I did him with gray primer. And then I actually purchased a jar of Tamiya X8 uh, lemon yellow. And then I opened it and put red paint in it and created this construction yellow that it seems like I use a lot of when I'm working on these matchbox. Uh, so I just decided to keep some around already mixed. That way, too, if you ever have to do any touch-up, you don't have to worry about remixing. So a tack coat uh, to give the finished coats a good base to set upon. And again, getting it from all different angles inside those arms, inside the bucket, the bottom of the bucket of course I always let the tack coat dry for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes and then I come in with successive successively heavier coats of uh, the matchbox construction yellow as I like to call it The chassis and the operator I just painted with uh, Tamiya X7 Red and 
like a half a drop of black. I just wanted to darken it just a little bit. And I didn't do a tack coat. Uh, the paint was going on real nice just the way it was. And uh, so I just painted it. And then after letting this set for a couple, three days actually to get good and dry, cured really well, uh, I actually gave it another coat of the yellow. And then of course I followed that up with uh, some clear coat. I like my X-22, what can I say? I wish they sold the stuff by the court. So who'd have thunk Lesney would have monster tires in the 60s? Giving him a scrub and some soapy water, getting ready to put this beast back together. So to put the bucket back on, I'm not going to be hammering on this model. You know how much I hate doing that. I don't have a drill press, so I'm making one of my little uh, sleeved pins. Check it for length. And then just put the whole thing right back together again. You look at the bottom, you can see those sleeved axles that I did front and back. And I waited to do this until everything was together because when you're making those sleeved axles, you have to handle the axles and tires and any paint or anything you do to them just kind of gets undone. And once you get done sleeving them, well, then it's together. So you kind of got to do it uh, when the model's already assembled, so you need to be careful. And then I also did uh, a tire wash. Again, being very careful. I actually just made myself a jar of tire wash. Anyway, here we are. Uh, back where this whole thing started. Kind of chipped up and... Seeing its better days. So anyway, why don't we take a look at uh, where I wound up. My contribution to the construction consortium uh, for me, the Aveling Barford tractor shovel, matchbox number 43B. Hey, stick around for a version of the bench and be sure to visit these other channels and I'll have links in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Time Rider and I'll leave the light on for you. Thanks for sticking around for this episode of The Bench. You know, if you remember, I was telling you that I had been to this swap meet. And, you know, I'm kind of a rescue guy. My dog is a rescue. And I rescued that little Ferrari 156 out of a bucket of die cast. And when I was digging around, I also found this, which was just in amazing shape. Uh, and probably a testament to the painting abilities of Hot Wheels. It's called a Acura HSC concept car, if I recall correctly. I don't care much for the back window, and of course I always hate the tampos, but it's a neat little car. And then I mentioned that I was using modeling clay in another video. I had, I had used it as a mask, 
And this is where the whole idea started for me is I'm working on this Mustang uh, custom and I want to paint the hood uh, satin black. So uh, I'm just, I don't like the Tamiya masking. I've had it take off too many, just little bits of paint that you then have to fix. So uh, this didn't work as I had hoped, but like anything, uh, I learned a lot while I was doing it. And hey, check this thing out. Believe it or not, this is a Tootsie toy. And I found it also again out at the flea market and I thought it would make a nice custom. The wheels suck, they're way too small for the model. And uh, I, I want to, I don't know, some of you may remember this, but there was a television show back in the 60s called Route 66, and it was basically about these two cool guys that were driving down Route 66 in a blue and white Camaro, or a, a Corvette. And so I'd kind of like to recreate that car, and that's where I'm going with this. So thanks again. Be sure to visit those other channels for their construction deals. And uh, that's about it. This is Time Rider, and you have a great day.